Hello again. So if you have watched my last video, I go through um, like why I have gastroparesis uh, due to the SIBO um, and weight loss, of course. You know, that's got to be a contributing factor due to the SIBO. What we think is SIBO. So um, gastroparesis uh, is one of the most debilitating things i think the SIBO i can handle the the bloating and all that good stuff because eventually it goes down the problem is though when you get bloated and it doesn't move it doesn't go down and so that is more than debilitating to have constant bloating constant stomach pain constant everything at all times even during the night um the things that i've found helpful first off like the non <laughs> pill items heating pads so a heating pad definitely helps the movement of your stomach the the slow moving muscles you know helps them it, it gives them heat and so it, it gives blood a little bit better blood supply to those muscles and it helps them move um, so you can definitely find some relief with a heating pad just don't overdo it sometimes I know that I'll lay there for three or four hours and by that time it's you know, I don't know how much heat is too much. Um, most heating pads have like a two hour timer. This is one that I found on Amazon lately because you can't really grab a heating pad, jump in the car and go. And so I found a portable one called Melissa. That's the dealio for it. I am getting another one in. Uh, Sunbeam has another one that's a little bit larger than this. The only thing I was disappointed in, the size of it's awesome, but the size of the pad for the heat is actually not the same size as the pad itself. So in order to protect the battery, this area here does not heat up. This is where the battery sits on this side. This is where the area heats up. So this is about, what, nine inches by six inches? So it's a small space. There are hot spots on this. So I've noticed, like, this corner gets really hot really quick. Um, the nice thing is this lasts actually quite a long time once it's plugged in. The little battery pack plugs in at the bottom. like a so, I think, like a so, and then it just tucks right into the, the pack. The little magnetic thing, I'm not a big fan of this either. This is not really a good clip. This is a magnetic clip here. Um, and so then you've got to press the power down in order to hold the power. So it works really well for on the go stuff. It does seem to last a couple of uh, two or three hours, especially if you keep it on the cold setting. The hot setting on this is way too hot. It will actually burn right through your skin. It's like 173. They don't lie, it's 173. The second thing I have found helpful is the TENS unit. And so this is the TENS unit that I got. This is um, off of Amazon and it comes with, you can do an A function and a B function. So there's two different leads you can get. So you can have four pads hooked up. Um, you can get the larger pads with the smaller pads. They're reusable, so um, they're not expensive, but I just don't want to buy any more anytime soon. So those are the, the pads. The secret for me, these this is going to be different for everybody when it comes to like where to stick the pads. I don't stick the pads on my stomach. I've tried it. I did not necessarily think that that was helpful. I think it kind of retarded the, and I hate that word, but it did. It retarded the movement of the muscles um, in my mind. That's what it made it feel like, that it was even more stuck because it was supposed to move one way and then here's these electrodes um, going to town and of course it, it did not like that. Where I think it's the most helpful for me is right along the lower lumbar spine. I will stick these right here and on either side of the spine, right above the coccyx, the tailbone, and run it um, with just a slow kind of even pulse. And it mimics more of like a workout. So 
it kind of basically tells your stomach you're in workout mode and you're working at your muscles without actually having to go out and work out. Um, and so it, it starts that movement of the stomach. I, I did also find there was a handful of people that suggested, or one site that suggested for gastroparesis to stick one on the spine and the lower and one on the T thoracic area. I'm not a fan of sticking these on your spine. I did try it. I will say it, it helped, it worked. Um, you can find that online if you just Google TENS gastroparesis. It's the very first photo that shows up. I don't know how accurate that photo is or where it's from. Um, I was pretty desperate when I tried it. I know that you're not supposed to stick these directly on your spine. I ran it at a low setting, so that's, that's the other thing. I did do my research in regards to in that area or on the stomach, there's supposed to be millisecond of little pulses, you know, just to kind of help mimic the, the larger proportion motions, you know, of the stomach. Um, so yeah, this is not a prokinetic. So pro, I think it's called prokinetic. They're the things that make your stomach up and go. Um, this magnesium is not a prokinetic, but it will help with uh, constipation. This is a magnesium with calcium in it that helps with muscles. And so that's particularly helpful for those of you that have like a lazy colon like I do. Well, I do right now anyway. Melatonin. So I didn't start taking this until about two or three nights ago. Um, I did a little bit of research. Melatonin in small doses is supposed to help with stomach muscles in the upper area and in larger doses help with the, the colon for better gastric emptying time. I took three milligrams the last two nights in a row and actually I will I will say I noticed a difference. Um, I noticed a difference in my relaxed state being calm but I also noticed a difference you know with my stomach so I think that's fantastic. You know something that you can take without have to rely on something big. Iberogast. Iberogast. Now for those of you with just SIBO, this is a great idea. For those of you that have the yeast infection, can, candida, candida, maybe I said it right that time. Um, this is not a good idea. So this actually will help open the dulinium with the ginger and it's more like a bitter so it actually does help produce acidity in the stomach to help move stuff through um it is not i i found the taste of it just sucks um but it works like a charm um I went to this the other day and relied on this and of course wound up finding the yeast infection later so we are stopping this right now um, and trying to figure out other things that work. Uh, Regland is the medication that I'm on that has been prescribed by a doctor. I'm on because Reglan has a tardive dyskinesia can cause in large therapeutic doses. Um, and for long periods of time, I'm on smaller doses, so I'm only on five milligrams uh, four times a day. And what I've done instead of doing five milligrams four times a day is I've cut them in half on request of my GP to cut them in half because I've gone to a liquid diet for the SIBO and the, the other stuff. And every two hours I take a half of one and that has helped a ton. Um, I think that that's really beneficial to kind of like space them out, uh, but to have a little bit each, you know, every so often so that it just continues what it should be doing. Uh, Moto Prill is another one by Pure Encapsulations. They're one that I've tried. I will say it worked really well. I took those yesterday or last night. Um, because the thrush came on so suddenly, the, the severe symptoms, I actually was scared that I overdosed on ginger. Um, so again, I will say like Motopril is gonna definitely like not be great to use for the Canadia um, stuff. 
and then Moto Activator, so Motil Activator by um, this company here. I should go out and get the bottles Integrative Technologies, Therapeutics, Integrative Therapeutics. That works really well as well. So that one I tried for one night. That one though has artichoke in it. And so artichoke can be a prebiotic. Now the derivative of the artichoke that they have in that, will it be or act like a prebiotic? I have no idea, but because of the SIBO and staying away from pre and probiotics while I'm on the antibiotic is a definite must for me. So I did that for one night. Um, and then definitely had to eliminate that. Uh, so back to the Reglin we go, because I would like to find an alternative outside of the Reglin, um, because Reglin does have some side effects for me, crazy dreams, uh, just foggy brain, you know, it's not that great. So anyway, um, that is the gastroparesis. I don't think I left anything out. The, those are the items that I've tried, um, and that's currently I'm managing with Reglin right now just because of the thrush that popped up yesterday. Um, yeah, so that's it for the gastroparesis.